Well, first of all, this government is delivering on the people's priorities, and with that, we are delivering on our points-based immigration system. This system will effectively mean that for the first time in decades, the British government will be in control of its own immigration policy and its system, where we'll, we will be able to bring the brightest and the best, people that can contribute to our economy and our country, regardless of where they come from. So this will be a global immigration system. And this, of course, will mean that people of talent, people with skills can come to the UK through a sponsored route, through an employer route, an employer-led route, or even through an institution-led route, such as academic institutions like this fantastic university that we're visiting today. And they need to speak English. But of course, the points-based system is effectively about the points that each individual will have to contribute to their ability to come to the UK and make their contribution. This is a difficult video to make. And in fact, I've been trying to do this for a couple of hours now. So the clip you just saw was pretty Patel. And uh, she was talking about the, the new immigration system that she wants to push. Fine. Um, there's, I, I don't want to rehash that because it, it's already been exposed. There is a misconception that foreigners come here and they get absolutely everything. And that asylum seekers come here and they get absolutely everything. It's not the case. This year, uh, Natalie Elfric, and I do want to point this out. Natalie Elfric, my MP, the MP for Dover Deal surrounding villages, supports Pretty Patel. Revealing herself to be the monster that she really fucking is. Whatever good she might do going forward, she is sanctioning the murder of innocent people by supporting Priti Patel. And this is why this video is so difficult to make, because apparently just having a shred of decency is so fucking difficult for this government. <clears throat> I used to wonder, as a kid in school, <sighs> way too many years now, I'd like to admit, um, but I used to wonder Learning about the Second World War, how did a society get to that point? How did they get to that point where they embraced so much hatred, so much anger, where they viewed so many human beings as something completely different? And I know this, this still happens today, not necessarily with Germany, but I know this happens around the world with different cultures. I know this still happens, and yet I still don't quite understand how it gets to that point. But now, that question is being answered. We're seeing it firsthand. Turns out, you need a decade. You need a decade of the elites putting their boots on everyone who's underneath them. Squeezing on their throat little by little by little. And every single day saying the exact same thing. It's their fault my boot is on your throat. Turns out all you need is a few vile human beings on the same level of, as Himmler. Enter Pretty Patel. The Home Secretary for the United Kingdom. Pretty Patel trying to save asylum seekers from danger by using a wave machine to keep them away. The, uh, the implication in this, and something that again, Natalie Elfric supports, is that on a calm day, you turn the wave machine on, making the sea much more dangerous, 
and killing them. <clears throat> the trick to dealing with migrants is to be as hostile as possible. Even if that hostility takes up far more resources than being vaguely human. Uh, this is written by Mark uh, Steele, by the way. Um, I'll link it down below, it's in the independent. At least Pretty Patel has some imagination. Usually when politicians moan about asylum seekers, they say they should get back to where they came from. But she's more spirited and says they should be sent to the Ascension Islands. Next week she'll suggest that as they cross waters so often, they should be sent to the second century to be Roman gallery slaves. And Jacob Rees Mogg will add, this will have the advantage of teaching them Latin, which will stand them in good stead for development of their soul. The Ascension, Island plan, uh, excuse me, the Ascension Island plan was discussed at a brainstorming session. So which methods of keeping them at sea were rejected? Her other choices must have been balancing asylum seekers on a wind turbine with torches to make cheap lighthouses, retraining them as whales to entertain tourists, and making them swim to Gibraltar and swish the water along to make North Sea warmer. Even though this is written in a somewhat comical way, I can't keep reading this article. And I will link it down. Uh, I will. Here's the thing, I've done numerous videos in the past trying to highlight the reality of asylum seekers. They're not coming and stealing everything, they're not. It doesn't work that way. If they come in and they buy one thing that's not on a pre-approved shopping list, whether they know it or not, money gone. They break the law, they get thrown out. The overwhelming majority of people who try to seek asylum in this country, predominantly from countries that we, under orders from the US administration, have bombed into fucking oblivion. They don't get to stay here. We don't take our fair share. And I understand people who come out and say, well, we should be focusing on English people. There are English people who are homeless. There are English people who are starving. Why aren't we focusing on them? And there's a very simple reason. Because we have a conservative government that doesn't give a fuck about human life. Not one fucking bit. As they squeeze on your throat just a little bit more every single day, they say the exact same thing. It's not us who have seen homelessness rise to the highest it's ever been, who have taken your children's education, who have pushed retirement age beyond what we expect you to live to. It's the person who risked their entire lives getting here on a fucking dinghy, who this government seriously contemplated murdering. I'm going to end with a, a quote I often use in, in times like this. First they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out, because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me.